All right, I'm going to deal with average speed in this video. And average speed is a pretty basic concept. It doesn't really care too much about acceleration. It's just taking the total distance over the total time. And you're going to be able to find whatever your average speed was. So the first example I'm going to give is a car that's traveling 10 meters per second for 10 seconds and then travels 20 meters per second for 20 seconds. What is the average speed? Now, a lot of people want to take these two speeds and just average them out, right? Well, why not? Why can't we just do that? So that's 30 over 2. That's 15 meters per second. I've taken the average speed. Now I'm done, right? Nope, that's not how you do it, OK? So don't, don't just try to average these two speeds out. Always stay away from speeds when you're dealing with average speed. Focus on the formula, OK? So the formula is what? Well, the formula is average speed is the total distance over the total time. This is not average velocity, which we'll get into later. But average speed is related to average velocity. But average velocity would be total displacement over total time, OK? But average speed is the total distance over total time. So how do we do that? Well, if I go to my simple equation here, um, uh, for each specific segment, I'm going to say the average speed is going to be the total distance. So I have to say distance 1 plus distance 2 over t1 plus t2. Now, I've given you nice units here that are already in meters and seconds. So you see that's seconds, and that's seconds, and that's seconds, and that's seconds. And you don't have to deal with that too much. But we got to find d1 and d2. So d1 is going to be speed 1. I'm going to use a v just for speed, OK? We'll use it like this just to indicate that I mean speed. Usually, the v with, that looks like it's blowing in the wind like that, that's the speed, uh, times t1. Okay, and I'll say d2 equals v2 times t2. Okay, so my first speed was 10 times t1, which is 10 seconds. So I have 100 meters, and the second one is going to be 20 meters per second times 20 seconds, which is going to give me 400 meters. Now I'm ready to work with this equation, right? So I'm going to say the average speed, make it like that, is going to be 100 plus 400 over 10 plus 20. And that's going to give me what? Keep going down. You're going to have the average speed is going to equal 500 over 30. Okay, and you can reduce that to 50 over 3. And that will reduce to simply 16.67. If you want to just round it there, it's fine. I'm not dealing with sig figs here. Meters per second. That's the average speed. Okay, So that's what happened between, in, the, in that example, that's what happened on the distance time graph between those two points. Now, if I graph that, what would it look like? And people say, well, why do I have to graph that? I just, just do the equation, plug it in. I just do the equation. You need to understand the, what the graph looks like if you want to be able to do physics. You should be able to do the graphs for every single problem that you do. You should be able to draw a graph. I mean, other, other than energy, which you can still draw a graph for, you should be able to draw the graph. So let's look at um, the velocity time graph. Let's just do a simple one here, velocity time. I'm not even going to do acceleration and position time. Let's just do velocity time. What does that look like? Well, I have velocity here. I have time here, right? And so my first velocity, let's say this is 10. Let's say this is 20. So my first velocity went 10 meters per second for 10 seconds. Then my next velocity went 20 meters per second for roughly twice that distance, OK? I'm not drawing with a grid here, so I'm hoping that's twice the distance. It should be roughly twice. Let's just see. It's probably not. Let's just see. One. No, it's definitely not twice. Somewhere out here. Just trying to make this graphically accurate. So that's twice that distance there. Looks a little better. OK. So it looks like that. 
and so my graph looks like this, right? And I'm trying to find that average somewhere in the middle. Now notice, I, I'm traveling on this graph. I'm traveling twice twice the time here, right? So if this is um, if this first one here is 10 meters per second here, and this next second one is 20, notice that it's twice the time from here. So you can't just average them out because the times are different, right? That's why you have to find the total distance over the total time. Now, another way that you can find the distance, you see how I did the total distance here was 500? Another way that you could have found these was you could have done the area of these little segments here. So let's say I found this area here. So this segment here of time is 10, this particular segment of time is 10, and this particular segment of time here is 20, right? I just happen to use the same numbers, so that really should have looked like a box, but whatever. So I can do the different areas here. So the, so the area of this graph is also going to be the total distance. So 10 times 10 gives me 100 here. And I always write the area and circle it like that in the box. And then 20 times 20 is 400. So there's your total distance right there. Okay. And then it gave me an average velocity of 16. Right? It didn't give me 15. Right? 15 would have been right in the middle, but it gave me 16. It gave me something higher than that. Okay, so it's not 15 here, it's actually a little higher, it's actually 16. So that V average is higher because I'm going twice the time. So V average was right around here. Okay, it's higher because I'm going twice the time, right? So it's, a, it's like a weighted average. I'm going twice the amount of time at 20 than I am at 10. So you just can't average the two numbers together. I think the safest way, again, to find that average speed is to take the total distance over the total time and you won't have any issues ever with that. And that comes into play later when you're doing average velocity too because the average velocity will become more involved because you'll have positive negative numbers and you might even have a, a number that's zero. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.